Hello, everybody. Welcome to the daily political tarot readings here on the Black and Orange channel. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. I'm here 365 days of the year, and some of you are as well, which is so cool. Thank you. Uh, uh, to take your 12 political questions out of the chat. So just put them in the, the chat before I come on. Uh, and then if you're watching this on replay, hello. You can get down in the description box, all the questions are there and I timestamp them as I go. So you can just come in and pick and choose, but do stop by uh, because this is a hangout. This is a hangout live stream. And I'd like to give you guys credit for all the, the funny, smart, amazing things you say too. So 10% uh, of my income from everything black and orange goes to Feeding America at feedingamerica.org, which supplies food to food banks across the country. That is an ongoing thing. And we have epic troll slayers who keep us safe. We have a great community because of you. Thank you. Okay, we are starting out today. At 1.30. These are kind of non, I've got two kind of non-readings. Just, just mentioning a couple of things. The first is, today is the 8-8 eight, eight Lionsgate. And what that is, is uh, basically the sun in the sky is in Leo. Welcome to Leo season. We're in Leo season. But right now the sun is in the sky, is in the same place as uh, Sirius, the, the star Sirius. And the sun being conjunct Sirius, astrologers have been talking about that for ever, uh, ever and ever. I mean, it was in ancient Egypt. It had, it was, it was, uh, marking the, the Nile flooding and, and all. it was a very important so and it's been so it's been a thing for a long time. What is it, what it is considered? It's considered fortuitous. It's considered uh, a, a a way to uh, kind of manifest your dreams. Some people call it the 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 jaws opening, as in Leo the lion. Uh, so it, it's. In a range, it's just like it's over like a week or so, but it's um, today's supposed to be the peak of it. So uh, that is that is what's going on today. So if you are into manifesting and and things like that, there you go. Today would be a good day to start something new. I imagine the um, the astrology might be fortuitous. I don't know. I haven't looked. Mm -hmm. I have to think about that. But anyway. Um, see, Torino, that color looks great on you. The overlay is great, too. Oh, thank you. I, 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 I do well with fall colors. Okay. Uh, for, oh, thank you, Fran. Thank you. Thank you. Tigress of Forley says, this time of year drains me. It starts around July 23rd. Well, um, <clears throat> the sun is almost exactly square my natal sun, so this is not usually a fortuitous time for, of the year for me either, but let's keep in mind, <coughs> I talk before I come on, but then I come on. Anyway, uh, this is not necessarily, uh, not necessarily easy. But over on Marjorie Orr, the astrologer, her blog, I, I did ask her why she says some, some squares, some 90 degree angles between the planets are, are good. And she said it is, the, it is the grit that makes the pearl. And I do, now that I look at it that way, I do find it, it is a, a kind of kick in the pants, which can lead to good things. So, oh, thank you, Fran. Tiger says it opposes astrological points in my chart. Oh, okay. I understand. So, all right. That's, so that's what's going on today. If, um, I, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm, 
I'm not really, I should, maybe I should do more, but I, I'm just, I'm not really drawn to manifestation stuff. What I am drawn to is um, astrological. When you start things, that when you start something, it, it creates an astrological chart for that thing. And so forevermore, whatever that thing is, you started a new job, a new business, <clears throat> a new project, um, a new, I don't know what, uh, but I, I look for those fortuitous moments to start new things so that that project will have a positive astrological uh, chart in and of itself. Um, so, and Kevin says, I'm feeling gritty. Uh, you're a, Cap you're a Capricorn. Uh, the sun, the, the sun may be in conjunct your sun, which is hundred instead of being opposite at 180 degrees, it's 150 degrees. And when, when things are 150 degrees from each other in, in astrology, they just, they don't mesh. They don't, I, I joke that it's like two ships passing in the night. Well, I, I joke that it's like my love life in two ships passing at the night, which is I'm over here. He's over on that ship. It's dark. The ships are passing. I kind of wave. He kind of waves. And that's, and he goes, that's, that's an inconjunct. It's just, there's no, it just can't, the energy can't gel. So that could, that could be doing it. So if you are a Capricorn or Pisces, the sun is in conjunct, maybe in conjunct your, your sun. So it's just, I, 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 anyway, very descriptive. <laughs> Uh, Tigress is on Capricorn, but Aquarius rising. Ah, so you've got the sun possibly in conjunct your sun and opposite your, so it's actually, that would mean it's on your descendant, which is not necessarily bad. Anyway. Okay. Uh, Oh, Trillium Tarot must learn more. Uh, do, do, Air, Darren's asking about Aries. Well, let's look here. Here, here, here. Let me grab the thing. Uh, I'm going to make... Do, 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 do. Oh, this is still the wrong one, but oh well. The... I have to peek around the side of this one. Okay, what's going on is these... There's got to be something I can use here. There's got, oh! It's Mr. Pumpkin, everybody. Bye, everybody. Okay, anyway, Mr. Pumpkin's here. This is... The sun is here. And uh, it is... All right, so just keep this is Leo ruled by the sun, it's a fire sign. All right, this is this is the home of Leo. So the sun is here directly across peak. This is Aquarius, Aquarius ruled by Uranus, it's an air sign. So the energy, if you have stuff over here, it's going to seesaw. The energy is going, the energy is going to seesaw with your, with whatever you have there. Okay. It's not all Astro Day. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to go on to, uh, we have other, there are a lot, there are 12 political questions. We'll get there. But, um. So here's here's Leo. So if you are Aquarius, that's what doing. Now, if you are Capricorn, or because think of it this way. Leo's here, 
directly across is going to be 180 degrees because it's a circle. Now, if you go 30 degrees this way or 30 degrees this way, you end up with 100, you're 150 degrees away. Because if you do the math, Leo, three, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, 120 degrees, 150 degrees, then it's in conjunct. So that's the ships passing in the night. Okay. If you, where the sun is right now, if you are in Aries, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, 120 degrees. And that is a, uh, that is a trine. So it's positive. Uh, Trillium Tarot. So the movement is clockwise or counterclockwise. The first sign is Aries right here. Bumpkin's looking at it. And th this is the standard chart. The first sign is Aries, and then it goes Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo. And it goes, it goes, it goes counterclockwise. And that's why, ooh, that's why uh, uh, Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. So if you're Sagittarius, let's see, you start here. So 30, oh, let's go this way. Virgo's 30 degrees. That's a, that is a minor, minor uh, aspect, but it's, it's positive. There's, if you're a Libra, you're 60 degrees away. And that is, that's a sextile. That's a very, very, it's a very energetic positive. It's like a trine, only more energetic. It's good. Then you have your Scorpio. If you're 90 degrees away, that's a square. Because if you think about it, 90 degrees makes a square. And that's a grinding kind of energy. Sagittarius, it would be, this would be 120 degrees. That's a, that's a trine because tri is, is three. And if you divide 360 by three, it's 120. So if you have a grand trine, it just looks, it's just a great big triangle. I mean, um, yeah. Well, one of the ways you can tell, you can spot trine, I just like, maybe more than you want to know, but you see this fire symbol right kind of here in the middle? Because this is oh, over here, this is Sagittarius ruled by Jupiter, it's a fire sign. Well, look at the other fire signs. Leo and Aries. And what was I just saying? Aries, they're 120 degrees away. The, the, the signs of the same element are 120 degrees away from each other. So they, they get along. They, they're, they have this inherent affinity. If you have somebody who has a whole lot of grand trine energy in their chart, the stronger it is, it can get out of hand to the point where it's like they, they just live in their own little bubble. And uh, not, not like Trump, but I mean, like, I don't know if you've met some people, they're just going through life. You know, they are just happy go lucky. Things seem to kind of work and they just, that they probably have a lot of, they probably have a major grand trine and it's, it can be hard to deal with them, to be honest, but it depends. It's better than having a grand cross, though, because that's a lot of stress. So anyway, uh, Revolution Ricky, I'm a Leo. I'm afraid to know what mine is. Well, if depending, I mean, the sun, okay, there are 30, there are there are 30 degrees in each sign. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, right? The sun, wherever it is in this chart, has a, a it doesn't have to be exact it can be have like a it can get close close to things and still have an effect it's called an orb i don't know why so an or uh, it can have a the the luminaries the sun and the moon are unusual in that their their sphere of influence is much larger it's actually 10 degrees in either direction so you think about it that's like 20 degrees so you may be, for instance, you may be a Scorpio, but if you're at the very, very beginning of Scorpio, if you're at the very, very beginning of Scorpio here, or the very, very end of Scorpio here, because 
where the sun is is square in the middle, it may not affect you as much. Anyway, Tigris uh, Forley says this is an awesome time for fire signs. It is. It is. And if this is if if you're a Leo, chances are. Uh, if this if this feels like it's affecting you, it's because you're. Well, let me ask you this. How close is your birthday to today? Is it within 10 days? Either it was within the last 10 days or the next 10 days. If that's the case, you've got this conjunct your sun. It, it actually could be quite beneficial for you. So. Okay. Ricky, next Saturday, August 20th. I don't know what that is, I'm afraid. Sorry. But anyway, so that's what's going on today. So happy Lionsgate. 8-8 Lionsgate, everybody. So uh, there, I know, uh, I think Kristen Langston put out a post or something about uh, an energetic boost today. Uh, that's... Um, if, if you're, if, if that's, you know, check out, check out Kirsten Langston at, at Third Eye Champagne, you know, and there are other people who are really, oh, your birthday is August 20th. It's probably just out of the sphere of influence, but it's going to, it's, it's not, it's not ham, it's, it's not illuminating, but it's, it's lightening your, your, your sense of self. It's lightening your sense of self, but it's not the, massive spotlight kind of thing so all right so uh if do we check out there are i know there's some people who really do manifestation stuff things like that uh i'm more the um I, you know me i'm more the astrology let's start something new and give it a good chart um kind of person let's see what's going on in this guy but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that it, there's no benefit to it no i'm not I'm not poo-pooing anybody's uh, beliefs. It's just, it's just my thing. Anyway. Uh, how are Virgos faring? Well, they're within 30 degrees. Because there's, there's Mr. Pumpkin. There's Leo. There's Virgo. 30 degrees is a minor, it's a minor aspect. So it doesn't, isn't as strong as the major aspects, but it's still positive. So. Not the Volpe, I'm 30 days from my birthday. Then it, it should have a minor positive effect on you, hopefully, I hope. Of course, it, it, you're more than just your sun sign. So there's all this other stuff going on in your chart. So one thing that if, but it, generally speaking. So, Kevin Brazil, I think my moon is Leo. I wonder what that means. Probably the same thing. It probably still applies to what I was explaining uh, about um, your, if somebody's birthday is here, their son, they're having their solar return, which happens once a year, which expands your sense of self. If it's your moon, then it's going to affect your emotions. It's going to light up your emotions. So, okie dokie. All right. So I've got to, I've got to remember to fix this. I've got to go, I accidentally got rid of the, the, the other one was better. It sits over, sat over here. But I accidentally deleted that one and I left the wrong one. I just fixed that. Anyway. Okay. All right, Mr. Pumpkin. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. There we go. Okay. Uh, da da da. Oh, gosh, Jeff, I'm so sorry. Bless. Bless, bless. Okay. Electra Storm, I was away from my computer. I thought you were talking about your cat, not a pen. Uh, it's it's Mr. Mr. Pumpkin Pencil. <laughs> You know me, I'm nuts. Okay, so the other non-reading we have, because I don't even know if there's anything worth reading about this. I just have a comment. So 
So we're moving on to Trump. 20 minutes in. Um, General Kelly decided that he was going to try and keep things stable and work against, not against Trump, but to try to keep things stable while Trump was in office. Make of that what you will. Well, he has been sharing some of the things that Donald Trump said. Quote, Trump said, you blanking generals, why can't you be like the German generals? Trump demanded. Which generals? General Kelly asked. Trump answered, the German generals in World War II. I think, I think we should give Trump his due. I do. I think we should salute Donald Trump in the way that is that most that best reflects him, his accomplishments, his legacy. So join me. Seek help. Trump, seek help. Seek help. Moving on to the actual readings. 22. <clears throat> yes, Kelly, he's due jail time. I am with you on that. Okay, have you guys seen the photos of this? Uh, New York Times journalist Maggie Haberman. By the way, Maggie Haberman, I hadn't seen an interview with her in quite a while. I don't know. There's there when with if you're a journalist, it seems to me that there's a certain amount of just doggedness. There's a certain amount of uh, being able to push through against when people are saying no or I don't want to talk to you. But for some people, I mean, I guess it's different people use different things. I know that there is a, there was a journalist who really got to Michael Cohen and was able to start getting huge amounts of information from him before he fully flipped just because she went on a charm offensive with, with him. And I don't mean like a honeypot. I mean, she was just nice to him. She was just really nice to him. Maggie Haberman, that would not be her deal. She is very uh, no nonsense. And so I'm happy she she's she got the scoops she did. Uh, wow. So New York Times journalist Maggie Haberman has allegedly brought the receipts in her claim that Trump flushed documents down flush documents during his time at the White House in the form of pictures showing, I think there's a mistake here, town documents? No, it's just documents and notes in the toilets. Let me pull up that because I actually did a screen capture from CNN. Let me share. All right, are you still working? Nope, it kicked me out. One second. Do, 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 do. Do. Refresh. Start broadcast. So you can see what's on my iPad. Da, da, da. Okay, I think we're working. Now we're cooking with gas. Share screen. <laughs> yes, sweet sugar Jones. Now in White House toilet news, at least it's clean. I can tell you that. The to at least the, coil the, the toilet is the toilets because there are two of them. At least they're clean. So this isn't going to gross you out. It's just what? Okay, so hang on. Let me. If 
I make this smaller, it'll make that a little bit easier to see. And then, yeah, you can see it. So, and then I've got a, I've got more of a close up. Is it this way? Yeah. So it's, it's CNN, Maggie Haberman, talking about these two photographs um, of things he was flushing. And now that I actually have them larger on my screen, the one on the left, it's, it's definitely Trump's handwriting and his Sharpie. But on the left, it says Rogers. And beneath that, it says Stephanie. And... Un upside down is that L Y S I thing? I'm lying. No, it would be wildly misspelled, which might not be a question. Okay, hang on a second. Can we get bigger? Quick quality pick. Quality pick where? I'm looking down a toilet. Rogers, Stephanie, L Y S I M. I don't know. Anyway, might not be. Plus, why? I don't know what that is. Okay, but anyway, Rogers and Stephanie. So, yeah. Yep. This was one of these is the white, it was a White House toilet. The other was an uh, Trump during an overseas trip. Thanks for sharing. No, I'm glad Maggie Haberman shared, but it's just awful. Ugh. Um, I need to pull up the actual cards. So, will this will this have make any difference? Well, I mean, Terry Solaris, I think the lie in. I think it lie in. He spelled it lie in correctly. <laughs> Who's surprised? Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. In the kitchen, minding my own business, making guacamole. Look up to see this. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, absolutely, Holly. He violated document retention laws. Mm -hmm. Anne says, try Elise Stefanik, number three Republican. I, in regards to what, my friend? So anyway, is this going to make any difference? <clears throat> because who knows what he destroyed? It actually is going to make it slightly harder to figure out every all the damage he did. <clears throat> it actually feels like they're going to be looking at what Trump did for a long time. What he did, that's the government. Where the money went, what deals he did, some of the more egregious policies of which there are many, but there is a lot of evidence. They, it's just gonna take longer for them to piece it together. But they they will. People are gonna be, be piecing it together for a long time. It's going to become one of those serial killer cipher things that people try to figure out for decades. It's going to make it harder to put it together, but that's not going to save Trump. Will this affect Trump directly? Besides the fact that he's disgusting. Insult to injury. <clears throat> Two of Cups, King of Swords. Does anybody know? I know that there are there are supposedly laws, or there's a retention record retention something something. But is it an actual law or is it just a norm? Is there actually a legal penalty for this that could be? Because do not, 
again, the underestimated Democrats. Uh, we really don't want to lose our democracy. And, and when we set our mind on doing something, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you're going to get the, you're going, you're going to get like a January 6th committee. Anna's saying yes. And yes. Does anybody know how, like, is it supposed to be, does it have any teeth, like a minimum of a year in prison or something? What are, what happens if you violate it? Government right in the center, because if he does this, and he's not held accountable, people in future will too. Trillium Terrace's presidents and vice presidents created or received after January 20th, 1981, and, in, and mandating the preservation of all presidential records, okay? Roland says, I think so, because everything the president writes, calls, or every visit must be documented. <laughs> Yeah, like we found out about the stuff, like every time we talked to the Russians, we we heard about it from the Russians. Trillium Chair still looking for a penalty. Oh, thank you. C. Torino says, yes, the commentators were talking about it. Okay. Dave is saying he said he had to flush the toilet 10 or 15 times. Oh, in many public speeches. That wasn't just one. No, that wasn't just one. Anne says, Presidential Records Act must have the archivist probably ask the DOJ to prosecute. Kelly says he must be stopped. I'm totally with you on that one. Well, this is on the defensive, the card of being on the defensive and the wheel of fortune has turned about secrets. But will he be legally held accountable. Darren says, teacher here, the dumb thing 45 said was that there were airports in the country during the Revolutionary War. Yes, I remember that. Oh, there were so many. But will he be held legally, be held legally accountable? Well, this is aggressive law enforcement, but frankly, this feels like a lot more, it feels like it's a lot more aggressive than this would warrant. I think th there is so much legal peril around Trump. It's from so many different cases. I do find occasionally it, it's hard to pick out one thread. It's like a, it's like a Gordian knot of legal tithes. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so I was just reading the comment, just seeing what you guys were finding out. Okay. <sighs> Hanged man. All right. He's, he's gross. Everything, you know, and if, as a matter of fact, the pictures of this toilet these toilets with his handwriting in the paper in the bottom, I think is a really, really perfect symbol of Trump. Certainly the Trump presidency, but Trump himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Anne says includes fines, imprisonment for not more than three years. And Mel's saying penalties shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than three years or both. Oh gosh, Mel Broussard says imprisonment for up to three years, years per count. Kristen Davis says every card reader sees him not going to prison. There's no justice. Oh, no, no. I see him uh, with a big old ankle bracelet on. I see many, many convictions and um, big old, big old ankle bracelet. And his, and, and they're gonna take apart Grift Co. I'm, I'm just, just, we're just waiting. Grift Co, that's Trump org. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> Renier, that's how he ran his life, his business, and the presidency. <laughs> yep. Tiger of Forley says, I got the ankle bracelet card when I read on him. Yep. You know, uh, would we rather him be in a in a an orange jumpsuit? Yes. And maybe that's maybe that's maybe the ankle bracelet is temporary while more litigation is ongoing. Polly wonder will Trump's ankle bracelet affect his golf swing? <laughs> He's got trouble ahead of him. Ankle bracelet will affect his golf swing. He's not going to be playing golf. It seems impossible because he gets away with, he seems like he gets away with everything. But this is him back in court. They come for him aggressively, legally, about, well, this is, this is him as the corrupt businessman. And the money. There's no, there's no golf club here other than his business being taken apart. So, Anne says the kicker is must be found guilty of willfully and unlawfully doing it. That shouldn't be that hard. A wrestling need reads would rather he was in an oubliette. So. Tigress of Forley, he can't get his narcissistic supply on house arrest. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Ooh. Um, where was that? Will okay, so at thirty seven thirty, will Trump get his narcissistic supply cut off? No electronic communications. How? many limits how severe will the limits be that are placed on him when he's wearing an ankle bracelet look at that Oh, too long <clears throat> to make a little space, just a little little space so I can save this and get the get the time stamping in. So with the uh, ankle bracelet, how limited will you still be golfing and calling in to shows and? No. I know it seems too good to be true. I know it seems too good to be true. But these last three cards, oh, that's taking away all of his fun. Whew, world card in the center. Man. You guys should see this. And it's full glory. He starts out over here with all of this, his, his dynasty. And then the government says, uh, excuse me, it's about your potential tax fraud, wire fraud, bank fraud, plus all the other, uh, the, the many civil cases that will come against him. And it's all heartache, legal heartache, convicted, the world as he's known it, done. That was that was then. Now, at that point, ankle bracelet. Right there. Ankle bracelet hemmed in. 
he, every time he tries to do things, he can't, he can't go, go out, can't, no, I can't, you can't, no, you can't, what do you mean I can't, da, 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 I was the president, blah, 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 and he's not living as grandly as he had been. Tiffany Lilly, is this soon or after he runs in 2024? The court cases themselves are going to take a long time, but, um, I'm actually hoping he runs. I, I, I think he's going to be forced to announce his candidacy once the first uh, charges come down against him. Because at that point, the what he sees as protection as, of being a presidential candidate is more important, believe it or not, becomes more important than the giant grift he's got with his followers depending on how serious the charges are, of course. Um, I, but I want him to run, please. Let's bury, let's, let's bring it all up, keep it all up there, and um, keep it out there for voters to see. Frank says, I just got an image of Melania giving him a bath. No, she's, she'll be gone, 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 goodbye. No. And look at us over here. Getting our country back. People voting for Democrats. Because Republicans are refusing to listen to decency. We have good candidates. And the people on the right, well, there's no point in voting. My vote doesn't count, so I'm not going to vote. And this was all because of the Republican plan to go extreme. So, to <laughs> check this. Do, 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 do. Wait one second. Internet's a bit slow today. All right. So, moving on at 43, 43 minutes in. And thank you guys for being here. I'm so glad I, so, so glad I don't have to go through this by myself. 43. All right, 43, Trump's pick for Michigan AG is under criminal investigation for tampering with voting machines during the 2020 election. I'm shocked, shocked I tell you, shocked. I think we can make a safe bet that those machines weren't, tamper, weren't tampered with to vote for Biden as the investigation deepens. Will any of it come back on Trump? <clears throat> <clears throat> um, this doesn't feel very strong. The energy is just kind of... If people are sick of his garbage, they're not listening to his, his catastrophizing and um, whining. And he's just petty. That's the thing about this insult to injury card. This this person here is just petty and just is enjoying the sadness of others, but not in a like a shade and Freud like, well, you did something wrong and you're getting your comeuppance. This is just this is just mean. Uh yeah, he's going for the, the true believers, communicating the far right message. Trump, the man. Not not the king, not the emperor, just not the not the, not a proper king. He's he's just a guy. Knight of Pentacles, threw some money at it. Yeah, people are getting sick of the shtick. That's what I've that's that's what I'm picking up. Julie Robinette says it's a horrible energy. Why, yes, it is. And that's why I'm so glad you're here with me. <laughs> because, 
I read on the news and my goodness, I don't know how I would have gotten through the past few years without you. All right, 45, 45, 15. Will a GOP, uh, Ricky was asking, will a GOP member or members call out Donald Trump's lies about the 2020 election to his face on camera? Oh, wow. I, I've not been asked that. Will they call out his lies to his face on camera? To some extent, I think there's been like minor instances of that. Oh, wow. Wait until after the January 6th Select Committee reconvenes. Yeah. January 6th Committee. And they have been gathering, organizing, studying. And they're coming back with more hearings. And boy, is season two going to be the blockbuster. Uh, anybody who did that on the Republican side could could lose their their spot in politics on the in the GOP. So for now, they're still eh, minimal. You know, eh, let's talk about something else, or let's let's. Uh, Let's talk about DeSantis or Pence. DeSantis and Pence have been on Fox News quite a bit recently. Apparently Murdoch is staring down the billion dollar uh, suit from Dominion and is like, eh. So they talk about Trump, but he hasn't, they haven't interviewed him. I think they, I think it's said in like over a hundred days or something. So also, uh, my understanding is it is a hundred day. Today is a hundred days until election day in the U S that doesn't quite make sense, but that's what I read this morning. Okay. All right. I've got to see everything's and then I got to double check them. Uh, 100 days from today. Wednesday, November 16th. No, it's more like 90. 90 days. What was that? What was somebody saying 100? That doesn't make sense. Okay. Anyway, here we are. Uh, no, today's about 90. Uh, well, actually, 90 days from today is Monday from November 6th. Oh, my birthday. So 92 days from today is election day. Okay. Oh, thank you, Ricky. Thank you. All right. So Elaine had a question. You're at 4830. 4830. If 45 goes to Saudi Arabia to avoid arrest, will he be allowed to stay? I have not picked up on him trying to do that, but let's have a look. If 45 tries to go to Saudi Arabia to avoid arrest. Uh, this is, okay, so this, okay, back up. All right, this would be the possibility of arrest or an arrest. This is definitely travel, but it's within America. So it would seem like being shuffled or shuffling between court cases in different places. Uh, his, his, his illegal dance card is full. Meanwhile, yeah, I wouldn't suggest he go to Saudi Arabia. Uh, he would not get the kind of reception he would want. He's actually safer here. 
I wouldn't have thought that he would be under penalty or threat. He wouldn't be under a threat of uh, physical violence, but this doesn't feel good. This feels like do not go to Trump, do not go to Saudi Arabia. Just don't. And I, I, I say that just as a decent person because I do not want him being hurt. I do not want him dying. I do not want him getting sick. I just want courtroom, evidence, conviction, uh, sentencing. I, I want plain, very plain stuff. Scary, scary. Okay. Um, at 51, Joanne had a question. Oh, it's a similar, similar thing, but it's slightly different. 51. Joanne is asking, is Trump on a flight watch? Watch list. If Is, is, he, on, is he on a flight watch list? If not, why isn't he? He's surrounded by Secret Service. He's surrounded... I've got five, no, I've got four major arcana here. It starts with major arcana and then the final three are major arcana. Uh, but once, once the indictments and what have you, the charges start coming down, that's when I think the government's going to really go, no, 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 no. okay, I think that's when they're really going to uh, start worrying about things like that. But the, the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. He's he thinks things have been quiet. He's going to get away with everything, but no, the wheel of fortune has already turned. It's just grinding away in the back right now. But those indictments and passing uh, evidence between different places, for example, Alex Jones, the the judge refused to seal the two years of messages. So now the January 6th committee is going to get those. The um, There was somebody else. Oh, the other families are going to get that. So Connecticut's next. Um, oh, Melissa Gerber says Sterling sees uh, 45 going to... Uh, Saudi Arabia for some golf tournament or something just before the hammer falls and just not coming back. I don't get that, but it could could be. I, I don't... It, it's generally the consensus among readers is what's most likely. And I'm, I'm not 100% accurate. I never... I've never... That's not part of this, this practice. I'm reading the collective energy. So... And so is he. All right, at 54, Steve had a question. Fifty-four. And that was no disrespect to, to Sterling at all. I like Sterling. It's not to like. Okay, so at 54, will Republican rejection of a cap on insulin contribute to their defeat in the midterms? Yes, please. Hello. If I was diabetic, I would be furious. People are already hurting financially. <sighs> to some extent, what's going on on the right is is what is is it's not changing as much as we would think in in certain respects. There's still the the lovers there. There's still the diehard believers. Um, the lobbyists giving money to Republicans. But these swords over on the right, on the right side of this reading, those feel like the syringes. And there's justice in the middle. I think the courts are going to get involved and the courts are going to say, okay, 
you're you're literally this is literally a death sentence Kathy's guiding light tarot says my insulin runs $500. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That's awful. Oh, I something. What did I do? I think I closed something. So, ugh. All right, so that's what I'm getting. The, I think the, the I think the courts are going to get involved at some point because it's unconscionable. Jeez. All right, at 56 minutes in, <laughs> the unemployment numbers are down significantly. The inflation rate uh, is coming down. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. We got infrastructure. Uh, Biden and their Democrats got infrastructure passed. They're about to get all of the, these other great things passed for the American people, and just maybe, just maybe, the media and comedians will stop making ageism jokes about Joe Biden, considering at least he can ride a bike, unlike. The, the the great girdle rider. So CNBC is reporting that consumers are feeling better about inflation. Yep. With midterms being only, well, let's say 92 days away. Will the political landscape start looking considerably bluer? Uh, suburban housewife, will we get national health care like Medicare for all? Ev Eventually-ish, but it's it's not going to be for a while, I'm afraid. All right, so CNBC reported consumers are feeling better about inflation. The political landscape starts to look bluer. The, the thing, it looks here like what the Republicans really are not counting on is who's standing up for women? Republicans refusing to help women, hurting women. The, the uh, Republicans want to do damage with these laws, these draconian laws. Democrats want to help them. And they're nicer, which counts, which matters. Women wanting privacy, wanting health care, using their own higher wisdom. But the message from the right is clear. This whole traveling from state to state thing and, and whatnot, ultimately women. Women voting against the beast. So things are definitely looking better for Democrats. But the, the main thing I'm getting is, is the draconian laws against women's reproductive health and whatnot. Yeah. Tiffany Lilly says, are there really that many female Republicans who don't care? Yes and no. They, they, they're willing to go along with things. They don't, they, they haven't necessarily thought it through a lot, but it's starting to affect them, people they know, maybe their own children. These things start shifting. So, Kathy Lampson said gas price is now under $4 where you are. Excellent. All right, so at one hour in, 
Uh, there's a question about Paul Manafort. Oh my gosh, he's so pathetic. He's so nothing energetically. Energetically, he is. The, the original, I mean, if you think about milk toast, for all that, that we spell the descriptor with, you know, the Q, with a Q, which actually would be kind of appropriate in this situation, but he, he is, he's like soggy bread. He's just, he's energetically, he's just soggy bread. It's just not nice small, unappetizing, no thank you, Ugh. Manafort, reading on Manafort, it's, it's the, the, the most limp-wristed handshake you've ever had. It's the most, I don't know, it's, I don't know why this came to mind. Way back in the 90s, there was a TV show called Daria, I think it was. And in the very first episode, I remember Daria was kind of a normal snarky high school girl. And of course, the there was the head of the cheerleaders, which was blonde and not nice, you know, cliche. And there was a scene in that where the blonde girl was ahead of her in the line in the cafeteria and she went to grab a tray and she went, Ooh, the trays are still wet. And Daria said, well, that which does not kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> Th that there are two lines from that, that, that I, I, it wasn't my favorite. I, I didn't, it wasn't great. I, you know, I didn't love the show, but that first episode, there were two lines in that that have stuck with me this, oh, these many years, but that was one of them. And then that, the trays are wet, or it's just like, ugh. that's Manafort. That's his energy. So, um, yeah, Kathy Dilla, he bought an ostrich skin coat. Who wants an ostrich skin coat? It just doesn't sound nice. It just, it's like, it's like chicken skin. I bought this chicken skin coat. <laughs> Ew. All right, so what about him? Paul Manafort seems to think Pence could stand a good chance if he ran in 2024 with him being painted in a good light that Pence has been in the January 6th hearings. Oh, this is actually about Pence. Could Pence potentially be a sleeper candidate who snags nomination? No. Um, I'll, I'll pull three cards on, on Pence. Oh, there's also talk of maybe Pence being DeSantis' running mate. But Pence, nominee, nominee for President of the United States. Nope. I just, nope. No, they don't want the baggage. Um, what about Pence's VP, the VP nominee? Move back into his old office. Nope. He does have more clout in the Republican Party now, which he doesn't deserve to have clout. But um, and if if anybody's new around here, I'm not really uh, not really a Pence fan. Yeah, he uh, there's there's more than that he did that day. He didn't just save our democracy. He was going to go in there and do the right thing. No. No, it is, it is not normally done that the vice president, after every group of electoral, electoral votes for a state, says, are there any objections to give a chance to a Republican, a Republican to stand up and say yes? He said, is it in writing? Is it signed and in writing? Yes. 
then it has to be submitted. It's rarely, rarely done, but he did it. I, I just, he, he did not say no. He did not say no to Trump until he had talked to everybody he could think of, including Dan Quayle, to say, how can I do this? Kathy Rollins says Republican VP nominee will be a woman. It's their way of trying to get the woman's vote. It won't work. Anne says they don't want Pence's baggage. Okay. Uh, but let's actually, what's, no, I don't want to read on. Who cares about Manafort? Okay, 106. 15. One of Liz Cheney. One, oh, six, fifteen. Darth Vader light. I'm glad she believes in democracy and she is a, an excellent ally. But do not trust her. Do not trust her. Yes, Kevin Brazil, even after his life was threatened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, okay, Liz Cheney has been successfully requesting moderate Dems switch sides to help her beat her Trump-backed GOP opponent. <laughs> no. Will this ultimately harm either party? I did just, just no, <laughs> just, just a big no. No, there, there are, Manchin isn't even switching sides. Think about that for a minute. They know what kind of baggage the Republicans have right now. And to switch sides to be on that side now with the January 6 hearings and all of this stuff coming out and yeah, no, <laughs> just, mm -mm. Um, but will switching sides, maybe I, I could be wrong. I could be right, wrong. Liz Cheney, you can get any Democrats to switch sides to be Republican with you. No, no, no. Okay, asking them to switch sides. She feels isolated. Uh, she's definitely being attacked. So we've got the, the MAGA people here howling at the moon, attacking her in her isolated position. The, the far right, they still call themselves Republicans. And they're not in a good position because of the, the folly of trying to overturn democracy. And ultimately, this is all insult to injury. And, and if there's a Democrat who will switch sides right now, they are idiots. But anyway. All right. Um, I have time for one more. Uh, um, at 109.45. 109.45. This is about Ukraine, uh, but it's not just Ukraine. Russia has assumed control of a Ukrainian nuclear plant nearly twice the size of Chernobyl. <sighs> what could go wrong? Um, now, as they're being run out, the Russians are being run out, they're shelling it and are threatening to cause further damage. What will happen? And there's a link to the NBC News article. 
John Travolta in Broken Arrow. Please do not shoot at the nuclear device. <laughs> this is a reactor, but still. Russians are shooting at the nuclear reactor. Okay, this is good. This is, is things ultimately being okay. Um, and there, oh my gosh, there are some people who have, are so, they are laser focused on this. Who are going to do everything they can to get in there, shut things down, keep things safe. Um, even with shelling, it's, it's, they are absolutely focused and people willing to come in from other countries quietly even, uh, or loudly. Um, what the Russians are doing, they don't have the ammunition to, uh, to do a sustained campaign. And ultimately things are going to be okay, but I'm just, I'm getting these, these people who understand what's there, how it works, they are just rushing in and they are, um, what do we do? And they, they are, they are willing to die to keep that reactor safe, to, to stop that reactor from uh, spewing radiation across Eastern Europe and beyond. So uh, I think it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. They will, they will deal with it. There may be some cleanup, but it'll be okay. All right. Well, actually, that is going to do it for me for today. Um, stop that. Do this. Fix this. There. Okay. So, um, Kathy Delal, they'll put their lives on the line. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So it is 1.23 p.m. here in Chicago. Thank you so much for being here. At 4 o'clock, I'll be over on the Book Art Media channel to do uh, creative sprints. You're always welcome. Other than that, I will be right back here tomorrow. All right. So just put your questions in the chat uh, before noon Central Time. And I look forward to hanging out with you guys every day. I really do. Thank you. All right. Take care. You're not alone. We are in this together. And there are good days ahead. There are. All right. Hang in there. Take care. Thank you.